Hi there, my name's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is my July reading wrap up. July. We're in August now. It's been a couple weeks since I've filmed a video. I was up in Sky staying with my family and I just didn't pre-film anything really and then when me and Alex got back we were really tired last week. We were really really tired so I just decided to take a week off. Reset. It's also so so hot here right now so if I look more sweaty than usual that's why. And I'm sorry, but those are the cards that I've been dealt today. <laughs> so I've got some water, which I'll be sipping on. Keep myself hydrated and tell you about the books I read in July. So the first book I read was The Watchers by A.M. Shine, which is a horror book. I started the month itching for a good horror. I actually asked someone on BookTok that I found that likes horror too what they recommended and this was one they recommended. After I started reading it the plot was familiar to me and I realised that it's because a film version of this book had come out like just a few months ago called, I think it's called The Watcher, singular rather than The Watchers, and it is produced by M. Nai Shyamalan and directed by his daughter I think. Um, I've not seen it but I had listened to a podcast episode talking about it. That's why the plot sounded familiar to me. But thankfully I didn't remember any spoilers of what I'd heard so I still went in not really knowing what to expect. But this book is set in Ireland and it's about our main character called Mina who is doing a job for a friend. She's transporting this rare parrot across the country but on the way to the location she's dropping this parrot off to, her car breaks down in the middle of a road in the middle of this big forestry. She ends up going into the woods to look for help with her parrot friend and just as night is about to fall, stumbles upon this kind of bunker glass room and a woman yelling at her to get in within the next five seconds or the door is getting shut and she's getting left behind. Mina of course gets into the room and meets this woman as well as two other people within this room who are looking really unclean and stressed to say the least. They've been there for a long long time and she learns that at night time in this place these weird scary creatures come up from the ground and go hunting. The only place that is safe in this woods is in this li little house. I ended up giving this three stars because I thought it was a really really quick read. I did really enjoy the experience of reading it. I enjoyed where the writer took us in terms of what these creatures were, how she incorporated a certain kind of supernatural storytelling into the plot. I don't want to say what it is because I feel like that is a major spoiler but I really enjoyed that aspect of it. However, I did find the first half of the book was a lot stronger than the second half, which I think is quite common in horrors and thrillers because the first half is all about the building and building and building of tension and then you want the second half to be this big adrenaline filled release, right? There is a twist that happens in the second half, which I thought was quite predictable. I like kind of saw it coming quite quite early on. I don't know if that would be the case for everyone and it wasn't that I didn't like the twist but it was just made a bit too obvious for me going in. The podcast I listened to didn't say very nice things about the film so I don't think I'm gonna go watch the film either. If I stumble upon it maybe I will but I don't think I'm gonna go searching to watch the film but it was it was a fun it was a fun horror. Next I read Mixed Signals by BK Borison which is the third book in her Love Light Farms romance series and this was my favourite book in the series so far. In my last wrap up I talked about the second book which I didn't love as much as the first book but this third one was what I really like in a romance. The world of Love Light Farms is a very small town, Stars Hollow-esque, so if you're a fan of Gilmore Girls and you want that kind of world in a book form, definitely check this series out. This third book follows Layla and Caleb, who we've met in the previous books. Layla is the baker who works on Love Light Farm and Caleb is a ex-police officer, now Spanish teacher. From the previous two books you've kind of got the impression that Caleb has a little crush on Layla and Layla doesn't know. Layla has really bad taste in men. She hasn't, I don't think she's ever really been in a relationship but she has gone on lots and lots of dates and just kind of picks bad 
bad men to go on dates with and she's missing this amazing Caleb guy right in front of her but of course in this book she begins to realise that maybe the right man has been right beside her all this time. The setup is kind of fake dating. They basically come to an agreement that because Layla has bad taste in men and Caleb is having some difficulty on the dating scene because he thinks he comes across too intense and too keen, they decide that they'll go on some trial dates with each other so that they can practice basically and give honest feedback without having the other person become offended. But instead of kind of learning from each other on these dates, they're just having a really good time together and they're being kind of idiots in the sense that they're not communicating well. The title of the book is literally mixed signals so they're each kind of thinking they're on different pages when really they're on the same page and really they should just be together. But I really really like this romance. It was so so cute, so sweet. I think I'm kind of moving on from my stage of enemies to lovers, bad boy romance tropes. I, ugh, I'll still always hold a dear place for that in my heart but I used to be so not into kind of friends to lovers and kind of just like nice normal guys in romance because I thought it was boring but the older I'm getting the more I'm appreciating a normal man. Maybe it's, it's probably since I met Alex to be honest because he is so lovely and so normal especially in comparison to other people I have dated so I think maybe falling in love with him made me realise that that is actually what you want in a man. You want a steady, dependable, nice man. You don't want all the toxic bad boyness even though it might be exciting in the moment. But yeah, I rated this four stars and I really, really really loved it. Highly recommend. But I feel like you probably should read the first two going into it. Not because it's necessary but more just to give you some context and to set up the world for you and the characters. Next up I read Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter which has been on my radar for so so long and I finally decided to read it this month because it was my month to pick for mine and my sister-in-law's book club. This is a thriller told from the perspective of two sisters who had another sister when they were younger who disappeared and is presumed dead and tore their family apart. These two sisters following the loss of their other sister drifted apart, don't speak to each other anymore. This is years and years later, they have completely different lives. One of them is kind of trophy wife-esque, has a very very rich husband, really really nice house. The other one doesn't have that. She struggled with a drug addiction when she was younger. She was a single mother for a long time but she kind of worked her way up and made a career for herself and isn't rich by any means but she has a house and she has a teenage daughter and she has a boyfriend who is very very good to her. Following the murder of the rich sister's husband and and the disappearance of another teenage girl. These sisters lives are pushed back together and they are working together to unravel this mess of secrets and lies which they think could be the answer to what happened to their own sister all those years ago. This book was really quite harrowing and I knew going in it was going to be, I'd heard from other book creators that it's like, you wouldn't call it a fun time reading this book but it is a book that you cannot put down at all. Like I was stuck to the pages of this book. I couldn't wait to find out what happens. I only rated this 3.75 which now that I'm thinking about it I think I would bump it up to a 4 because I did really 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 enjoy it but I think upon finishing it because the book was so go 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 all the way through once it ended I think I just had a bit of like a <sighs> what moment and I think the the end of the book was the weakest part for me. I think I felt the end was a bit anticlimactic but now that I'm looking back on it and I'm thinking about what did happen at the end, I don't think I'm agreeing with myself which is why I think I'm going to change my rating up to a four star for this because it was incredible. I would highly recommend it if you like thrillers but if you know that you're sensitive to certain things happening definitely check the trigger warnings on this because it is quite graphic. Oh my god I'm so sweaty. <laughs> 
Next I read No Exit by Taylor Adams, which is another one that has been on my radar for so long. It's a thriller that takes place all in one night. Our main character is called Darby. She is a college student and she has gone on a spur of the moment trip back home from college because she has learned from her sister that her mum has been diagnosed with a very severe and fast acting case of cancer. Unfortunately, this is happening in the middle of a snowstorm, so she is forced to come off the road and take Take shelter at a services where there are three other people who are also stuck there. Darby thinks that she's just gonna have to wait there for the night until the snow is cleared from the road but when she discovers a child kidnapped and locked in the back of a van she realizes that she can't just sit around and she needs to take action because one of the people she is stuck with in the services has kidnapped this child. I rated this three stars and again I'm thinking <laughs> maybe I should have rated this a bit higher because looking back on it I did really really enjoy this read. I think maybe I'm, my ratings have just been off this month. This was really, really fast paced because it takes place all in one night. The events that happen are so snappy. The twists that come are so quick and out of left field. It is literally a case of there's like no time to breathe because for the main character, there is no time to breathe for her. I think the reason I didn't rate it as highly is because when you start to learn more about what is happening with all the people trapped in the services. I just felt like the motivations involved with various characters was a bit convoluted. But this was another one that I was literally glued to the page. So if you do like fast paced thrillers, this is definitely one that you should check out. I think I definitely will want to read more of Taylor Adams in the future. Next up, I read Sleepless by Romy Hausman, which I read for my Storygraph Reads the World challenge for the Germany prompt. This book is about a woman who has served time in prison and has recently been released and she finds herself suddenly wrapped up in a murder plot that her boss's wife has committed and trying to help her cover it up, basically. That is the like, minimal description of this book because I can't really go into too much more without giving spoilers away but I also wouldn't recommend this book for you to read anyway. I only gave this two stars but I did not enjoy it very much at all. The first like 25% of the book setting up you're kind of not meant to know what's going on, you've got different perspectives, different narratives coming together just in glimpses so you're just getting little puzzle pieces of the overall story coming together and seeing how all of these characters link together but then from that point on I found that the story was quite predictable and everything that I thought was happening was actually what was happening. It, there wasn't any shocking twists or surprises that I found and um, which is what I want from a thriller. I want something twisty, turny, with in-depth characters that you root for and it's fast paced to read but this book I just I wasn't wanting to pick it up at all really. Mm, that's all I really have to say on it. Unfortunately it just wasn't a win for me. And then I'm going to talk about the next five books that I read in a bulk because they're all part of the same series. I read the first Magnolia Parks book last year and I really enjoyed it but not enough to continue on with the series. And then this month I got Kindle Unlimited for free and all of the books in that series are on Kindle Unlimited. I was on Sky, I just finished Sleepless and that had kind of put me off another thriller. I wanted something fun and light and I just took the urge and jumped straight into the second book in the Magnolia Park series, which is about a different character, Daisy Hates. I think that's the other reason why I was put off starting the next book because we'd gotten to know Magnolia in the first book and I didn't feel keen to go into a completely new character's book. However, I'm so glad I did because I loved Daisy Hates so much more than Magnolia Parks. Magnolia, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, <laughs> the Magnolia Park series is essentially just Gossip Girl, but if it were set in London and following young London socialites and all their drama and romance and antics. That's very much what Magnolia Parks books are. The Daisy Hates books are set in the same world and the same community of people, but Daisy Hates is part of a crime family. Her brother is a, what do they call it? <laughs> a ganglord. 
The series basically goes a Magnolia book, Daisy book, Magnolia book, Daisy book, one after the other. And another important piece of information to know is that the Magnolia books and the Daisy books are always taking place concurrently which because I'd read the my first Magnolia Parks book last year and like I kind of remembered the gist of what happened there's basically basically the drama in these books there's one main romantic relationship that you're following for Magnolia and Daisy but then you've also got like extra love interests that are coming between them or they're coming between themselves and there's just like loads of love triangles and you get the gist, it, it's Gossip Girl. But because I could I could only remember like the main plot points of Magnolia Parks from a year ago, when I started Daisy Hates, it was very confusing for me because I didn't know that Daisy Hates was taking place at the same time as the first Magnolia Parks books. So there was things happening in Daisy Hates where I was like, hang on, am I just completely misremembering the first Magnolia Parks books? Because I'm sure this happened, but in this book it's saying this hasn't happened yet. I'm like feeling like I'm ahead and it's because I was a, I was ahead, but I was meant to be ahead. Once I had grasped that piece of knowledge, I had to look it up eventually because I was so confused. Once I had that confirmed for me, I was then in and I loved the Daisy Hates books so much more than the Magnolia Parks books. From what I can tell, Magnolia Parks' story is done now. The last book, Into the Dark, wrapped up her and her love interest BJ's story. Pretty definitely, I would say. But Daisy Hates still has two more books to come out. They're not out yet. And I don't think we've got a date for them coming out yet. <sighs> and I'm actually a bit stressed about it because it's not even that I've been rating these books that highly. I think I gave them all 3.5. I think there was maybe one I rated a bit lower or one I rated a bit higher, I can't remember. It's not even like I'm in love with this series, but it's just so addictive. And because I prefer Daisy Hates' his story and in the last Magnolia Parks book, I basically saw what's going to happen in the Na Daisy Hates book, but from Magnolia's perspective. So I, I know what's coming, but I don't know why what's coming is coming. I don't know the ins and outs of what's happening in Daisy's life. I can just see it's gonna be stressful, basically. I don't know if any of that made sense. If you've read the series, you'll you'll have understood what I'm saying there, um, but without spoiling it for the people who can, that probably just sounded like absolute gibberish. That to say, if you like Gossip Girl, if you want a mindless read, if you want drama, romance, a bit of gang action, definitely check these books out and push past the first Magnolia Parks, I would say, because it gets so much more interesting. I really didn't like Magnolia Parks as a character at the beginning, but she did start to grow on me. I think I, I feel like these books kind of gaslit me in a way or like, not, not gaslit, I feel like I've maybe got Stockholm Syndrome with these books because I just kind of disappeared into the world for two weeks there and was just completely immersed and was kind of hate reading it at first and then started to actually enjoy it. But I'm not sure if that's real or, or if that's just like, it's just what's happened now. But yeah, they were fun. <laughs> Finally, the last book I read, I finished in one night. Um, it was a really quick read. It's called Night Shift by Annie Crown. This is a, just a short wee college romance about a girl who works the night shift on Friday nights at her college library and when the captain of the basketball player shows up one night they end up having a little hookup in the library and what follows is a series of miscommunications and misunderstandings between the two of them and what they want from each other which was fun for the first half of the book but by the latter half of the book, I was completely done with it. I was really enjoying the first half. I I thought the writing was really funny. I liked the characters. The spicy scenes were written well. And then all of that, I would say the opposite for in the latter half. I don't I don't know what happened. The, our main character is essentially obsessed with romance books, but she's never had sex. She's only kiss someone when she is drunk. She doesn't have a lot of experience. She's meant to be quite awkward, but she kind of goes through life like, expecting that any romance she encounters should play out like a romance she's reading. And like one of her friends who also likes romance novels, they talk in tropes. So they're like, real life events are happening and they're describing them as if, oh, that is so fake dating trope or, oh, don't you see? It's our least favorite trope happening, the miscommunication trope. And that was fun in the first half, but then it just kept going, going, going in the second half. I felt like our character, 
who started off quite smart and funny just became really, really annoying in the latter half. I did rate it three stars because of the first half. It was fun, but I just wish the second half had been stronger and it had gone a different way. What I wanted to happen didn't happen basically. And that's all the books I read in July. It was mainly made up of Magnolia Parks, I'll be honest with you. It's so hot right now. <sighs> but I'm sorry I disappeared there for a couple of weeks. I do think that I'm maybe gonna change up my posting schedule on my YouTube channel because I've been applying for jobs recently and hopefully I'm gonna get a job soon. And that in combination with me writing my book and making videos, I don't know if I'll be able to do a, a video every week, but I'm hoping that I'll be doing a video every two weeks. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep Sunday as my upload day. I'm gonna play around a bit. So if you're getting videos coming up of me on weird days that you're not expecting, that's why I'm just having a little play. The other thing I want to say is I've been trying to post more on TikTok. I'm trying to get more friends on TikTok so that when I come to wanting to share more of my book, I have people I can share it with and get some feedback from and get some attention on it because I do ultimately really want to end up publishing it. I posted a couple of snippets from what I've been writing at the moment up there just now and I'm probably going to keep posting more just because it's fun and it's good practice for me to start sharing a bit more of what I'm writing. So if any of that interests you, I've put the link for my TikTok down below. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you've been reading in July. Let me know what you've been up to because it's been a while since I've spoken to you. I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!